My name is Reginald Farrell. I'm a research professor at New Jersey Institute of Technology and Physics. I'm working in a very interesting area, uh, which is to try to understand how a cell functions at the nanoscale. We've been able to take traditional technologies, package it into something which is really a lab on a chip. But along the way, we did something very interesting, which was we created the world's smallest biofuel cell. There's a whole area in biology called cell electrophysiology. And it's understanding the electrical nature of the cell. The one main tool that's used for that is called a patch clamp. Drug companies use this tool to understand how to keep cells healthy or to be able to target particular cells that we would not like to see healthy, such as cancer cells. At some point it came to me that it would be really nice if you could more than just look at the cell, which is what we do with microscopes, is if you could touch the cell. If you touch something with your finger, you can kind of get a sense for what it's about. But imagine if you could touch it with all 10 fingers. Okay. And then imagine that maybe you want to touch the same cell with a thousand fingers. And you immediately come to the problem, how would you make something like that? Our vision was to create a device where you could actually understand what the cell does electrically in a way that nobody's ever done before, which is to measure it from multiple places in and around the cell simultaneously, while the cell functions, while the cell moves. Imagine making a whole platform, you know, with billions of these probes, so large that you could look at groups of cells interacting. This type of program is not possible without a team. It requires several expertise in several different areas, ranging from biology, to physics, to chemistry, to pharmacology, to electrical engineering, to mechanical engineering. They all fit together and they, they have to be there in order for this type of vision to be realized. One of the key collaborators was Zafar Iqbal. It was his carbon nanotubes which started this project and his understanding about how you grow and how you manipulate carbon nanotubes. And so without that expertise, none of this would have really, really happened. To people who are working on this area who understand what a nanotube is, it's only one nanometer in diameter. If you just want one, you might think, drill a one nanometer diameter hole and let it grow there. The first attempt at this really failed and the holes were far too large for us to do what we wanted. I'd seen something at a conference where people were using another technique called electrophoresis to deposit nanotubes. And we tried it. We did the first experiment, and the graduate student showed me a picture that he took in an electron microscope, and there was just one nanotube in the hole. And the implications of that were huge when I first saw it, because if I can make something that people will actually be able to build and use. We can make the package very, very tiny. We can make it tiny enough that it could actually possibly, in a far, far future, float right in your bloodstream and draw its power from the uh, sugar that's, that's already there and do its diagnostics on the fly. Really a lab on a chip. As we understood that we could actually position carbon nanotubes repeatedly where we wanted, then uh, we had a toolkit. Um, and it kind of led in an interesting direction because my collaborator, Professor Iqbal, uh, was already working on a variation of this same effect in the macro scale. He was making something called a biofuel cell. But he thought that there might be a more efficient way to put in the nanotubes to get even more power out of this device. I realized at the time that we could also continue on the same path we were doing for the cells and make the whole biofuel cell very small and as it turns out in the field of uh, 
of fuel cells. Getting your electrodes close together is very, very important. It determines how much power you can get out because you lose power in that distance. All of these things integrated together and worked. Uh, we made a biofuel cell, the world's smallest biofuel cell, and as expected, it had a hundred times more power density than anything that had ever been fabricated before. The big breakthrough was putting one nanotube in a hole, uh, which you can make with all the, today's technology. That means you can use all of today's technology to scale it up. Imagine you could run your cell phone on something like sugar water. That's the type of technology that we're, we're driving this towards. That's what my research is about. In a world of very, very large things, with the mega scale of everything, we find that there's enormous power in the tiniest of things.